All right. Hey, today we're joined by uh, Marshall Nguyen, uh, Senior Vice President of Sales and Leasing with Caspian Group. Marshall has been in the business for years. He's been a key part of a deal to bring a new Asian mall concept to Eden Prairie, which is nearing its opening date. Hey, Marshall. Thanks for being here. Hey, what's up, uh, JD? Thank you so much for the opportunity. I'm very excited to be a part of this podcast. Yeah, of course. Uh, first, tell me a bit about what you do. Um, you know, uh, so my specialty right now is I'm currently, I'm currently the senior VP at Caspian Group. We're a local uh, commercial real estate investment and also brokerage firm. Um, but my role right now in this, um, in this business is I do a lot of investment sales. Um, I also do my own investments and developments as well. And also doing a lot of brokerage services where we um, are able to service uh, uh, investors and different business owners uh, in their commercial real estate needs. Yeah. Cool. How did you get into this field? You know, it was by accident. Um, I graduated from the, from the University of Minnesota. You know, it took actually it took me six years to graduate sure. uh, because I didn't know what I wanted to do. Right. So all when all my friends graduated in uh, in four years, I'm like, man, you know, I got to change my major. Blah blah blah. blah. And you know, and um, uh, for funny stories. Uh, our family we grew up in the nail salon business. Yeah. So growing up, I've always helped uh, the family business. So I knew the industry from in the back of my head. And, um, and I remember after college, I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I opened up my own salon. And then I was very lucky and very fortunate. And I still am that I met a, a, a client during the time. He was one of, our first, one of our first customers. And then as time went on, uh, he became a great, like a dear friend and also a mentor. And um, I remember in like 2014, 15, I told, uh, I, I told my mentor, Gary, I'm like, hey, uh, well, during the time he was my friend, I was like, you know, I feel a little bit lost in life. What should I do? Um, he's like, well, Marshall, there's two options that you can take. He said, one, you grow this nail salon business nationally and become a franchise, you know, or two, you get into real estate. And I was like, real estate? And, um, and he's like, yeah. And, and I was like, well, like, going like, selling homes he said no go sell buildings <laughs> yeah so um so i was like okay that sounds really interesting and you know being excited uh and also naive I'm like you know what i'm gonna go take his advice because he's the type of person where um you know he i i love his lifestyle always travel the world and he built his wealth uh wealth through um through commercial real estate mm -hmm. um and i uh, was very fort fortunate to meet him and then I took my, you know, I got my license in, um, I, would, I would say 2016. And during that time, um, I met with 24 people. And, uh, and these are individuals that ran the commercial real estate market in Minnesota. During that time, there was no opportunities, you know, but I knew that I got to keep uh, pushing forward and not give up, right? And um, I did find out during that time of my research and development um, in trying to get hired, um, there's not many uh, colored people within this industry. So I was actually very excited that I saw that because I knew that um, there's a unserved market within the commercial real estate. Because I remember growing up, I would always uh, help my parents and my parents, family and friends read over leases. And I said, hey, you know what, this might be a pretty good niche. And then that's basically how I got started and, you know, meeting with 24 different people. No one wanted to hire me. Um, not that I was, didn't have formal experience. I had informal experience and I had, you know, and I have a lot of street smarts. And, um, and then luckily Caspian Group was, uh, was able to give me an opportunity in 2017. Yeah. Awesome. Um, that's really cool. Uh, tell me, tell me a bit about Caspian. You guys specialize in uh, low risk, high return investments. What kind of yes. investments are these, and how do you identify those? Yes, you know, so Caspian Group was uh, started in 2016, um, and the company, uh, you know, is, is ran by, um, you know, one of my, I would say my, my 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 brother, but also a mentor, and a good friend that gave me an opportunity. I, you know, I I owe a lot to him. Um, so they focus in value add commercial real estate properties where uh, there might be, you know, where properties need, need, need some TLC, right? Uh, maybe there's vacancies, maybe they're in situations where the tenants are paying low rents uh, compared to the current market. 
And what we do is that we purchase uh, these assets and we fix it up and we flip or we hold. So we're, you know, so we'll make a little bit of a margin once we uh, stabilize the, the, you know, like the commercial assets. And, you know, we specialize in a lot of um, industrial buildings. So when we first uh, started the company, uh, a lot of industrial um, buildings right before the big boom, you know, uh, if you compare now, uh, then to now in the commercial estate investment world, uh, industrial, you know, um, buildings are the top tier right now right. Uh, because of COVID as well. Um, so we specialize in value add uh, investments um, that could be from office, industrial, or even um, uh, retail. And we also have a brokerage service uh, arm as well, where we focus on third party uh, clients, where we help landlords lease up their space. Uh, we help tenants find their location for their business, negotiate on, on their behalf and get, some, and get the best deal for them. We also represent buyers and sellers as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Um, getting more specific into one of your big projects right now, you're leading the concept for a new Asian mall in Eden Prairie, um, which is which is nearing opening. Um, tell me about that plan. Uh, what makes it financially viable and what does it offer to the community? Absolutely. You know, I think that's a uh, phenomenal question because that's a question that a lot of people ask. Right. Um, so I was hired on uh, 2018 to start looking for um, a standalone big box, right? On um, the 494 corridor uh, within Bloomington, Edina, Eden Prairie. So anywhere that was close to the Mall of America and also the airport, because um, our goal was to find a centralized location for this Asia mall concept. And, um, you, know, for, you know, for the community, you know, one of the things that I tell people is that in Minnesota, it's a hidden gem. You know, there's so much to offer here. There's so much culture. Mm -hmm. And there's just so, you know, especially the, for, you know, like, like the Hmong community, they have Hmong village, they have Hmong town. And we see that, like, man, that's so cool how they're able to bring their people together in one space. And also even the, the Somali uh, market as well, like the, the Somali community is very strong here. And they, and they have their, their own mall, right? The East African mall. Mm -hmm. So, and, you know, Minnesota has a really good Asian population. And then we were thinking, hey, what if we create a place for, for, uh, for, for the community? And what I mean by community is everyone as a whole, where they can come in to one area um, and spend as much time there and give them a little bit, uh, a little taste of Asia without really leaving the state, right? Yeah. And we wanted a place where, um, uh, we have a lot of community support, um, you know, uh, where we're able to bring in food concepts that people can try, uh, where um, they can go grocery shopping in one area and eat, shop, you know, uh, just like the Mall of America, but on a smaller level, mm -hmm. obviously. And uh, this one, you know, the opportunity came about when uh, Gander Outdoors, when, uh, you know, when they went, you know, they had, you know, the company was struggling and they ended up closing that location um that were you know that we that we end up buying so it's like 120,000 square foot building and then we saw that hey you know what this is opportunity we had to jump on it right away off of 494 and 212 where we wanted to be mm -hmm. and um and we saw the opportunity in the 2000 and uh, uh around 2020 and then we closed on the deal in 2021 um so this is during covid obviously right, right? you know we were very nervous um, and again, we, you know, I think what really got us over was, you know, the fact that it's not about just making money. It's not about, um, you know, buying a building, uh, and doing, you know, being the first, uh, to have an a Asia mall two level concept in Minnesota, but the, the bigger vision of what it could be for everyone. Yeah. Um, and the financial strengths, you know, obviously, you know, when you buy something, you know, we didn't pay all cash, we, uh, we, uh, we financed it. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's a lot of, I would say, uh, you know, everybody was nervous. The state was getting shut down. Um, <laughs> the, the whole world was getting shut down, but we kept, you know, we, we, we kept moving forward. And what people don't know is that when we first bought the property, JD, um, our plans, what we wanted to do, um, we were in sitting in limbo for six to seven months because we were trying to get city approval uh, for our, you know, for our, ex, you know, to extend the second floor mezzanine uh, without jeopardizing the parking ratio. So, and as you know, everything was through Zoom calls and everything. 
was delayed. So we were sitting in limbo for quite some time before we could even start the work. And then, you know, coolers and freezers, uh, we ordered um, steel joists to extend the, the second floor. Now that took us almost one year to, uh, um, you know, for the shipments to come in. Mm -hmm. So a lot of struggle, but, but we saw that, hey, you know what? The world is facing a lot of issues right now. And it was pretty good time in, in the sense of um, doing something new, doing something exciting in the commercial world where a lot of these big boxes are, are, are dying, right? Mm -hmm. And companies, they never had an opportunity to, to figure out, hey, what do I do when my big tenant, you know, when this big tenant leaves or if they go out of business? And they end up selling all these big boxes, and the whole world was, you know, was like, "Hey, big boxes are dead," blah blah blah. And then we came to realization is that you know, big boxes are not dead. You know, it's only dead if there's no uses afterwards. And uh, that's when we did, it. you know, that's when during that time we were like, you know what? I think we can do an Asia Mall concept here. So, yeah, yeah. Tell me more about um, what do you think is the opportunity when targeting maybe a specific demographic or population. Yeah, you know, so in uh, Minnesota, um, especially like, especially East Asian uh, um, demographic, they're usually in like Brooklyn Park, Brooklyn Center, St. Paul, mm -hmm. um, and majority of the population is there. Um, so when we um, targeted, let's say, uh, Bloomington and Eden Prairie, we want to be in a centralized location, because what people don't know is that the Twin Cities is actually pretty small, right? Even though you might be in a different city, but we're like right next to each other. Mm -hmm. um, um, but then we noticed, you know, we, we found out that we don't want to go into those markets, JD, because um, it would have affected a lot of the mom pop shops. Sure. If we would have came in there, you know, people were like, why won't you go to Brooklyn Park? Why won't you go to St. Paul? Actually, we did, you know, we did all the market research. Um, and obviously, e Eden Prairie is the demographic is not as high as St. Paul or Brooklyn Park, but those two cities are very saturated. And our goal is to um, to not take one you know one business out and bring in new business. Our goal is, hey, how can we expand into a new area where we can drive new businesses, right, and new concepts without affecting the other uh, businesses in the Minnesota? Yeah, if if, if if that makes sense, yeah, it does. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, and if it creates a destination, you know, people will come from St. Paul or wherever, anyways. Sometimes. Right. You know, yeah. and then you know, and our goal is to create a destination in the sense of being a tourist uh, place when people come come to visit. Yeah. Uh, because the mall, because the mall of America, for example, you know, we're only like five to ten minutes away, depending on how fast you drive, right? Sure. And um, the mall of America has more tourists that come visit the mall than. Minnesotans. Yeah. So if they can come to the mall, hey, you know what? Let's do a Google search. What else is around here? Oh, there's the Asia Mall. Let's go check it out. Um, you know, so they don't have to travel so far. Right. And it's also close to the airport. Uh, yeah. So when people come, you know, you know, because because when I travel, if I have a um, like like a layover or something, I'll try to find somewhere nearby to, to go hang out. Yeah. Right? So um, so so that was our vision, and we're close to also south of the river as well. Um, yeah. And there's not many concepts or, you know, big grocery stores, Asian focused grocery stores um, uh, south, uh, south of the river. So, sure. Cool. Uh, speaking more broadly, how I'm, I've written a lot lately about, you know, malls that have been kind of sitting vacant or not doing so well um, that are getting redeveloped. Um, and I, I feel like there's just a different focus on malls kind of in this world that's been impacted by COVID. How do you see malls changing right now? What are you expecting from the future? Right. Um, you know, what, you know, what, what you said is correct. Um, what, what am I focused right now, JD, is finding big boxes and doing adapt to reuse, but also big re regional malls. Right. Yeah. And one of the things that we had to, to think about is what uses can we put in there that actually make people come? So, you're going to start seeing a lot of entertainment in big boxes, especially in first tier markets. Um, you know, uh, we're in the process of buying uh, a few of these um, uh, uh, empty Sears box uh, in different states. And, you know, there's a lot of collaboration within the mall owners too, because what people don't know is in a regional mall, the anchors, let's say JCPenney's, Sears, Macy's, Kohl's, right? They're all owned by different people. 
So they're all owned by different investors or, or, or even that company. Uh, but then the interior mall is owned by a, you know, let's say it's like Salmon Group or 4D Properties. And, um, and they're owned by different people. And so what I've been seeing is that some people, uh, developers are buying Sears bots, tearing it down and they're building multifamily and they're building entertainment. They're building uh, uses that require people to be there. Um, and the more I see in the sense of like apparel type of stuff, um, where people can get things online, uh, it's, it, it will affect. But then if we can bring in uses like food hall, grocery stores, um, uh, mixed use developments, apartments, in, uh, entertainment uh, type of concepts, I think it's going to keep people there and they'll, they'll need to spend time there because obviously you can't do that online, right? You can't, uh, well, unless it's called metaverse and gets pretty uh, big, but I, you know, but for now, um, um, you know, bringing concepts that forces people to be there and uh, be, be physically there. Um, and I think that's what's really going to change that concept. And, you know, what, one of the projects that, we're, that I'm currently doing right now with one of my part, you know, with, uh, with our partners is we're, we're, we're buying this um, empty uh, re- regional mall. It's a, it's a two-story regional mall. We're opening up the ceiling and we're going to do some apartments on the second level. And then, so we're going to gut everything out on, on, on both uh, levels and do apartments on the second level and then do uh, open up retail, everything on the main level uh, with grocery stores and also entertainment concepts. Um, and I think that's going to work. Uh, the city is very excited about it. The community is very excited about it. Um, and then I think, you know, doing adaptive reuse projects like that will change the scope of the malls that are not doing well, right? Uh, not all malls are failing. There's a lot of malls that are still very busy, but certain malls, um, you know, they are dying. And I think, and they're in great locations. Uh, and um, if we can find uh, we, uh, ideas um, and concepts that works in different states, um, in different countries. Uh, I travel to Asia a lot, JD. And I love going to Asia because it's such a dense, like I'm, I'm originally from Vietnam and I go to Vietnam every single year, uh, you know, right before COVID. And um, I see how they take boxes and they convert it, you know, and, and they do such a good job. And, you know, when I travel, I find ideas and I want it, and I want to bring it back because if it works there, it could work here. Right. Right. Um, and these uh, countries, they're so competitive in, in development. And so they're always on top of their game in technology and concepts that keep people there. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but yeah, but again, go back to your question. That's what I see happening um, is a, a lot of adaptive reuse. Yeah. And really bringing kind of this mixed use and making things more enjoyable to walk around and things like that. Yeah, right? you know, um, yep, absolutely. And, you know, and that's our vision to, uh, to do that. And, uh, I think if we can do that, the first project, well, I think it's going to get a lot of inspiration from different developers around the country. Yeah. And that's our job, right, is to bring in new ideas. Hopefully it works good, inspire others so they can do the same. Um, and then I think that's what's really going to make the commercial world uh, a happier place. Awesome. Well, great, Marshall. Thank you so much for taking the time. Did you have, uh, I don't have any other questions. Did you have anything else you want to add that I didn't ask about? Um, you know, I think, um, you know, I think you did a great job, JD. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm happy and blessed that you wanted to do a podcast with me. And, and, um, and, you know, I'm happy to share information and what, you know, uh, what we're doing because, if we can do more good deals and more good developments, it's, it's going to build a lot of confidence uh, with, uh, with people. Um, yeah. And when that happens, it hopefully betters the economy. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thanks a lot. Take care. Yep. Yeah, thanks, JD.